The following presentation is brought to you by the Antidote to Deception Media Ministry online at theantidotetodeception.com. And now, our featured presentation, Come Before Winter. Good evening and welcome to day three of our evangelism series entitled Come Before Winter, Do Thy Diligence. Today we are looking at the topic, The Voice in the Afternoon. And our scripture reading is taken from Genesis chapter 3, verses 7 through 9, I want to say. Genesis chapter 3, verses 7 through 9. The Bible says, And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Let us pray. Father in heaven, as we come to this day of our evangelism series, Lord, I ask you to be with your people. Father, open the eyes of our understanding. Make us to understand the things that are needful at this time. 
And I pray that as we continue to serve you, as we continue to hear from you, as we continue to experience you, you will teach us more and more of your words. Father, humble our hearts today to receive the message. May those who this word is intended for be in the listening audience, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, following these items of music and our theme song, when you hear that, you'll know that we are about to begin the message, I Come to the Garden Alone. Thank you again for joining us, and you're listening to The Antidote to Deception, Internet Radio. You're listening to The Antidote to Deception.
Let us pray, Heavenly Father, as we are about to open up your word to your people. We ask for insight, we ask for wisdom, we ask for knowledge, we ask for understanding, we ask for clarity, O Lord God. But most of all, we ask for your Spirit's guidance, direction, and leading, and teaching, so that the words may come through with clarity. Father, right now I pray that you'll open up the airwaves. Wherever people are able to listen, I pray, Father, that you will give opportunity. I pray, Father, that... Whoever needs to hear this will hear this. Thank you, O God, for being a prayer-hearing, prayer-answering God. And we come to you now as humbly as we know how to supplicate the throne of heaven and to seek your face, O God of Jacob, we pray. Amen. So as we started looking at yesterday, Adam and Eve, God's created. We don't know how long it was that they were in their garden home until they sinned. But it must have been a beautiful existence until Satan marred the experience. Earlier in our scripture reading, we saw the early effects and the unsettling effects of sin 
upon the minds of Adam and Eve. Again, the word of God says, from verse 7 of Genesis 3, And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Today, we don't want so much to go back over the experience of Adam and Eve, but just so that you understand that the sin problem goes deep, dear listener, but the sin solution, Jesus Christ, he went even deeper to the very depths of hell itself to win back the lost. Notice, friends, notice that God who came to them, as we can infer from the reading in the cool of the day, to have his evening fellowship with his creation, he was expecting the same thing tonight, quote-unquote, let's say, humanly speaking. And so he comes and finds them, and they're nowhere to be found. They are hidden them, they're hiding themselves in the trees in the garden. Why? Because as we established on yesterday's program, before, in chapter 2, they were naked, but they were not ashamed. Here in chapter 3, they discovered their nakedness, but it was a different type of nakedness. They were devoid, they were destitute, the presence of God over their minds was no longer a reality. They had evicted him from being king and lord of their lives. And so, the ugliness of sin began to set in. And they realized that it was not the fruit in and of itself that was harmful, that was detrimental. And so they concluded, they perceived that it must be God himself who will be the executioner against transgression. Now hear this. Now hear this. Let me tell you this clearly. The Lord God is not the executioner against transgression. The Bible is clear. The Bible says in Psalms 34 and verse 21, evil shall slay the wicked. Friends, as I often say, God is not evil. So God is not the one responsible for the death of the wicked. Evil slays the wicked. God does not kill. God does not destroy. He loves. He is life. Sin brings death. The Bible tells us this in James chapter 1. We're not going to go through all of these, but make a note of it. James chapter 1 verses 13 to 15. And there are other places that show the principles, the mechanisms. When God shows up, he's only showing up to offer life and peace. He only shows up to bring grace, never hurt and harm. And notice, friends, notice the language the Bible employs to show this principle. Even though at this point, sin has so completely eviscerated the presence, the power, and the principle of God in life, that Adam and Eve felt no other recourse but to run and hide from God in fear. They were afraid, the Bible says. But notice, sin did not change God. Friends, if it would have, it would have been before this. It would have been after Lucifer's sin and rebellion took among the angels. But sin did not change God in the least. The Bible says that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Friends, that voice in the afternoon knew full well in my earlier example, I was speaking as a human, but now, understand, he knew full well where they were. If you are a casual reader of the Bible and you would come across those words, you would think that God had no clue as to where they were. And he's not omnipotent after all. But no, friends. God, our God, is a God who is relational. He is a relationship God. All the idols of this age, friends, all the lying spirits of this age, They don't want relationship. They want rulership. And rather than dominate the minds by force, God comes in and says to his children, Where are you? Where are you? It's time for our fellowship. And friends, 
Notice that there had to be something in the voice of God that made Adam and Eve answer, or else they would have cowered there in fear and just await the punishment. There was something in his voice, friends. As the songwriter says, it was his voice that made the difference. Today, I pray that you will allow that voice that comes to the garden, and as we heard in our opening theme song, as he walks with me and he talks with me and tells me I am his own, I pray, dear listener, that that would be your experience. I pray that you have such, such a thrilling time of it, knowing full well that the Lord God is for you, never against you. Friend of mine, today I want to share something with you. I want to share this so that you can understand. Like I said, today we're not focusing on Adam and Eve, we're focusing on the love of God. The Bible says that herein is love, not that we loved him, but that he first loved us. You see, friends, when Adam and Eve sinned, they lost that love and feeling, as the song says. They lost it. And God was coming to bring it back. God was coming to reinstitute it. But you see, of course, as always, sin has to be played out. And so God tells them what is going to be the consequences of their actions. Friends, I want you to understand that God is not the causative agent in any of the things that he said would happen. Whenever God lays a finger on someone, it's to help them, not to hurt them, to heal them, and never to harm them. I promise you, we need to turn, we need friends to take a second look at who God is. We need to understand that he is not the being that we have accused him of. We need to turn our eyes upon Jesus and look full in his wonderful face. We need to realize that the God that we serve, the God that I'm appealing for you to serve, is not the God that has been portrayed all along, the one that takes lives, the ones that when someone rebels, he punishes them. God is not the punisher, my friend. God told us what would be the outcome. God does not lift a finger to harm any person. The Bible tells us that God's love is revealed in him being even willing to give over to the demands of the creation. If they want to go further from him as they could, and the furthest you can go from God is into the second death, God will honor your request, my friend. Remember on yesterday we talked about the atheist who was trying to remember the name of Darwin's book with his debate with the Christian apologist. And in order to do so, he had to invoke the name of God. And like I said, I don't know, but I'm willing to bet that our almighty God would have condescended to go and whisper in that man's ear the name of the book that denied his existence, just to show that how real he is. Oh, friend of mine, Today, I want to speak to you about the love of God. You see, friends, the love of God is not just revealed as we see in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. But it's also revealed in the fact that he allows us to make our free choice. He did not stand in the way of Adam and Eve choosing he told them what would happen if they made the wrong choice, but he never once interfered in their freedom of choice. That's the God, friend. That's the God of the universe. And I'm telling you, the reason why you want to serve him is because even after you do in your lot with the people of God, you're still free to say, I do not like what I'm seeing. I do not like the merchandise. I want a refund. I want a full refund at that too and you're free to walk away. You are not under obligations, under bondage when it comes to God, my friend. It has to be 
a humble service. It has to be a voluntary sacrifice. It has to come from a place of love. Friends, understand that that voice that came to Adam and Eve in the afternoon, it was a loving voice. It was a soothing voice. It was a peaceful voice. It was his voice that made all the difference in the world. Today, I want you to realize the love of God. I want you to understand the love of God. I don't want you to be out there and thinking that the God that I'm seeking to have you worship is this malicious, tyrannical God that, or just because you are a drinker, a prostitute, because you do, quote-unquote, bad things, that he's going to turn on you and punish you because you are exercising the choice that he gave you. Friends, no. I'm not one of those people who try to scare people by telling them that God destroys the rebellious. He does not. The rebellious destroy themselves by their own choice. That's the tough part to hear. That's the one thing to hear because naturally as humans, we are self preserving self-preservationists. Look at Adam and Eve as we're talking about. When they figured that they were about to die, they ran and hid. And so many of their children have done the same. Oh, my friends, let me tell you this. The voice of God makes all the difference in the world. I'm going to read this scripture, and then we're going to pause as we hear just that, his voice makes the difference. So we're going to turn to 1 Kings chapter 19 and we're going to begin from verse 9. This is speaking of Elijah when he fled after he heard that Jezebel was going to was coming after him to do to him what he did to her prophets. So picking up from verse 9 of 1 Kings 19, the Bible says, And he came thither unto a cave, reading from the King James, as I usually do, and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said unto him, What dost thou hear, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have broken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go forth and stand upon, that, upon the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break it in pieces, pieces the rocks before, and rent it in pieces the, the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. And it was so that when Elijah heard the voice, when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went and stood in the entrance of the cave. His voice makes the difference When he speaks, he relieves my troubled mind It's the only voice I hear that makes the difference And I'll follow When I need him, I know where to find him. In my place of prayer, his spirit hovers near. His voice gently gives me my direction. And I'll follow that voice 
that I hear His voice, His voice makes the difference When He speaks He relieves my troubled mind It's the only voice I hear that makes the difference And I'll follow one day at a time mighty tower tearing down every stronghold in my life he's the master of the wind and the storm that rages when he speaks all my darkness turns to light one more time with that verse please his voice It's a strong and a mighty tower Tearing down every stronghold in my life He's the master of the wind and sea that rages When he speaks, all my darkness turns to night Thank God His voice, His voice makes the difference When He speaks, He relieves my trouble <laughs> It's the only voice I hear That makes the difference And I'll follow One more time, please. Thank God His voice makes the difference. When He speaks, He relieves my troubled mind. It's the only voice I hear makes the difference. So I'll follow one day at a time So I'll follow one day at a time His voice makes the difference. Notice again the words that we read before that song. And he said, Go forth, Lord speaking, and stand upon the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains, and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. Friends, that's where God is. When God came to Adam and Eve, he was not boisterous as the wind, the earthquake, and fire. He was a still, small voice. And that's how he comes to us even today. That's how he wants to come to you today, a still, small voice. A still, small voice that says, this is the way. Walk he in it. And that's what he wants to do for you today, beloved. He wants to show you. He wants to lead you into that good way. He wants you to be in a position where you know that your role right now 
at this time is to avoid the trappings of this world, to yield not to temptations, to make sure that you are overcoming this world and everything that's in it. You're listening to the Antidote to Deception. Please click on the link in the subscription for today's show offer. The Bible says, Isaiah 30 and verse 21, And thine ear shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. Friends of mine, the God who came to Adam and Eve that day, they sinned. Is the same God that comes to us repeatedly with the words, Where are you? He wants relationship. He does not want to dominate over you, friends. It must have been the saddest day, at least the first time in the universe that it was such a sad day all around when Adam and Eve fell. Oh, friends, but the season of the fall could not change the heart of him whose voice came in the garden that day. 
And you see, friends, today he is still coming to us, coming for relationship. And he says, this is the way that you ought to live. Again, he does not force his choice upon you. He says, you're free to choose. At the end of the day, you will be destroyed by your own undoing, friends. God will not be responsible at all. He is love. When the Bible says that God is love, friends, when you think about love, you're thinking about God. God is love. When you talk about love, you're talking about God. God is love. When you love, it is because of God. We love, the Bible says, because he first loved us. This is the way that we ought to live, the Bible tells us. And friends, as we wind down, I want just to go back over these grounds. Friends, when Adam and Eve fell, God did not come into the garden stormy mad with lightning bolts emanating from his forehead just to show how mad he was. The Bible is clear. It says that Adam heard the voice of the Lord walking. What a descriptive picture, my friends. And yet, they ran. Not because they feared the love that was God trying to give them. No, they did not fear love. They were afraid of death. But they heard you see, friends, that, that, that's the irony, friends. That's the irony. They did not hear an uh, earthquake walk. They did not hear a fire walk. They did not hear a windstorm walk. They heard the voice of the Lord as he always did, gently coming to them in the garden. But now truly, truly more naked than the physical naked were they that all reason goes out the door all reason flies out the window and they tried to hide themselves from him who has eyes everywhere all over the universe nothing escapes his gaze but in their sin ridden condition they could not comprehend this of course and you could understand why Beloved, still, we see the manifestation of God and we are left to proclaim, oh, what love. Oh, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, undeserving mortals as we are. Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. What a mighty, mighty God we serve. And I pray that it is the prayer of your heart, dear beloved, to fall more and more with in love with him each and every day. I pray that you don't ever stop making that a thing. Keep on, beloved, keep on falling in love with Jesus. You're listening to the antidote to deception.
sweeter as the days go by. Oh, oh while the land between my Lord and I, I keep falling in love with you over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with you over and over and over and over again. I keep falling in love with you over and over again. My friends. As I get ready to get off the ear, I just want to speak to you for a little bit. We have come to a most critical time in our world's history, my friends. We have seen so many things that, as I said in our previous presentation, ought to tell us that Jesus is coming soon. And the songwriter says, "Are you ready for Jesus to come today? I want you to be ready." For Jesus to come today, I want you to take a stand on the Lord's side and don't turn back. We are nearing home, my beloved friends. We are nearing home, and it is high time that you awake out of sin, you awake to righteousness, friends. It is time that you turn your back on this wicked world and say, "I will follow Thee, my Savior, wheresoever my lot may be. I will follow Thee, my Savior." I will follow thee, O oh my Lord. I'll follow thee today. I want to just invite someone listening to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Again, you heard earlier that you could check out the description area and find out about more resources that will help you in your walk. And I pray that today will be your first steps in a new direction. O oh my brother, O oh my sister. Oh, dear mother and father, son and daughter, it is time to come home. It is time to stop making excuses, and it's time to make a change. It's time to come home. You've been out there in the world too long. It is time to come home, my brother, my sister. What we talked about today is very real. God is not in the fires. God is not in the earthquakes. God is not in the windstorms. God is not the destroyer. He's a peace speaker, and He wants to speak peace into your heart today. Friend of mine, understand that this glorious undertaking that God undertook to rescue mankind came at a great cost to Himself, even the death of His Son. But you know what, my friends? You know what? Here's the thing. He'll do it over again. He'll do it all over again. That's the God that we serve. And so, as we get ready to pray, I want to invite you, friends. I want to invite you to come to your own personal garden and walk with Jesus. Have Him as part of your experience. Know for sure. That he is going to be with you for the rest of this journey of life. Dare to believe. Get ready to pray with me in a moment. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to present every person who is desiring to make the decision to go all the way with you. Father, I give them into your hands right now, and I pray in the name of Jesus that you will receive them. Father God, today we humble our hearts before you, and we just say thank you, Lord. Thank you for your amazing love. Thank you for your amazing grace. Thank you for your amazing presence. And so today. Lord, today, as I bow before you, I do so on the behalf of every person out here who has a longing, desire to come after you, but because of traditional views of you, they are afraid. Lord, today I pray that you will reveal your heart to them, that you will say to such a one, "This is the way. Walk in it." Father, I pray that you will bless this program. That it will be used to go to the ends of the earth 
and reach souls for the kingdom of God like never before. Oh Lord God, speak to your people. Speak to your people today, I pray. Open up the hearts of your people. Open up the eyes of our understanding. I pray, Lord God. Give us a rich treasure of what's going on before us, Lord God. Help us to see that the only thing that will last is our relationship with you. And Father, when time shall be no more, I pray that you'll save us forever at last in your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend of mine, I want to thank you so much for joining me today on day three of this 11-day journey. Come before we enter again. Our theme scripture is, do thy diligence to come before we enter. And I'm appealing to every one of you, please give your life to Jesus before it is too late. And one day soon, you'll have the experience that you're going to hear in our closing song. May God bless you abundantly. Until next time. standing in your presence in the presence of the king and I hear a multitude of voices as all creation sings now they're watching from the grandstands these mighty men of old as the final curtain rises and redemption's plan unfolds. Mount Zion, a legion roots I can hear the angels singing. On Mount Zion, have a legion
You have been listening to the Antidote to Deception radio program. Join us next time as we continue to lift up Jesus Christ and His power to change lives.